Girls, in my absence today, you're going to cover algebraic modelling. What it is is relating algebra to real life problems or modelling real life problems with algebra. Let's see how it works. So here's a couple of examples. Write an expression for the total cost in dollars of 10 bottles if each bottle cost X dollars. So we don't really know how much each bottle costs, so that's X dollars, but we're buying 10 of the X dollar bottles. Now, if we were buying 10 bottles and each bottle cost $2, you would go, oh, it's easy. 10 lots of $2 is $20. In this scenario here, we don't know what the actual total cost is, but we know it will be acquired by doing 10 lots of X, um, which equals 10X. So our expression um, is 10X. Write an expression for the total cost in dollars of hiring a plumber for N hours. The plumber charges 30 bucks call out fee plus 60 bucks an hour. This is really common in the trades. So if you um, ask your parents and, um, and they talk about when they've called a tradie out, uh, what they'll note is that he or she will have a call out fee. And that's the cost for actually coming out to your premises. So it's 60, or it's, in this case here, it's $30 at a flat rate. So they'll come out and they'll go, that's 30 bucks. And then if they work on whatever is broken for a, an hour or two hours or three hours, that will be the variable cost. So this one here is what we call the constant. Okay, and this part here forms the variable portion because the amount you pay depends on the amount of hours it takes to solve the problem. So if they work on your house for three hours, it's going to be three lots of the $60. If it's five hours, five lots of the $60. Uh, $60. But this $30 is always a constant. So what we're going to say is that uh, we're going to do $60 an hour for N hours. So N lots of 60, that's the variable component, plus what we know, which is $30 automatically. All right, and then what we're going to do is just simplify that, equals 60 N plus 30. And there's my expression for the total cost. A plumber charges a $60 call-out fee plus $50 per hour. Use an expression to find how much an eight-hour job would cost. So you can do it actually by just going eight lots of 50 plus 60, but let's write our expression and then do this via substitution. So it's a $60 call-out fee this time, not $30. This plumber is obviously a boutique plumber. Um, and um, so a $60 call-out fee, 50 bucks an hour, although cheaper per hour. Mm, interesting. Anyway, all right, so it's going to be 50 lots of N because that depends on the number of hours worked plus 60. So our expression is 50 N plus 60. And then we're going to say that X or N is the number of hours. N equals eight. So we want to know how much an eight hour job would cost. So N equals eight. So we're going to do 50 lots of eight plus 60. Eight times 50 is 400 plus 60, the job is going to be $460. All right, example two, a rectangle has length X and width Y. Now, I would highly recommend you draw up these particular shapes. So any question that involves shapes or things like that, make sure you draw the picture. So there's length X and a width why? They can be around the other way if you want. Write an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. So if this side length is x, then this side length is also going to be x. And if this side is y, then this side is going to be y, because that is the same as that, and that is the same as that. Um, so the expression for perimeter is going to be y plus y plus x plus x um, is the perimeter, or 2y plus 2x. Write an expression for the area of the rectangle. All right, so that's just going to be x times y, which is xy. Okay, if x is equal to two, write a new expression for the length and for the width of the rectangle. So instead of it being x, what we now know is that this one here, let's get rid of it and replace it with two. So the length, is equal to 2 and our width is equal to 
why? I think this question might actually be write a new expression for the, not length and width of the rectangle, but perimeter and area of the rectangle. So it doesn't make much sense writing expressions for the length and width. So let's write the perimeter one. So it's going to be y plus y plus two plus two, which is equal to two y plus four. Now notice that I could have just substituted x is equal to two into that um, and got two y plus four as well. So that's another way of getting that expression. All right, so that's for the perimeter. The area is um, two times y, the area is two y. So that's our expression for area. All right, if the perimeter of the rectangle is 22, give two possible sets of values for x and y. So we know that 22 is equal to the perimeter and we've got 2y plus 2x. All right, so what could um, happen to make this true? All right, well, y, let's just say that y is equal to three. All right, so that's going to be 22 equals two times three plus two x. 22 equals six plus two x. Now, if I look here, what I need is a value here to make this plus this equal 22, all right? So if we remove six from 22, I'm gonna be left with 16. So that means that this one here needs to equal 16. So X would equal eight in that case. And let's just try it out. 22 equals six plus two times eight is 16. 16 plus six is indeed 22. So that's one possible configuration of the X's and Y's. Let's try another one. 22 equals 2y plus 2x. All right, so I'm going to go with something a bit simpler here, y equals 1. So that's 22 equals 2 times y, which is 2 plus 2x. Now, what would x be to make this 20, so that 22 equals 22? I believe it's x equals 10. Let's try it out. 22 equals 2 plus 2 times 10. 22 does equal 22. So that's another possible configuration. How many sets of values could make this true? Actually, there's infinitely many, but these are just two examples. All right, so the work will be on the drive. Um, so follow through the exercises in the textbook, save up your questions, catch you guys tomorrow.